The only thing you can send to your future is your prayer. It can go and wait for you. Your prayer can become your protocol. It waits for you at the gates of your tomorrow. It checks that tomorrow is ready for you. And it, if, if it finds anything your tomorrow that can sabotage the name of God in your life, it can an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Joshua Selman, saying, This destiny and this kingdom advance is not by might it's not by power but it is by my spirit saith the lord by my spirit your destiny your excelling ministry business family advancement the manifestation of the hand of god within a territory please hear me the bible says it is not by might it is not by power but it is by the Spirit of God. Whilst it is true that the Holy Spirit plays an active role in the revelation of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, as one of the, the Godhead, has a separate office that an individual can encounter. Please listen. The Holy Spirit is there to create conviction. Jesus was teaching and he said, I have many things to tell you, but he cannot bear them now. He said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he shall guide you into all truth. Is that true? He will testify of me, he said. But the Holy Spirit, listen to me, as God has a separate office that you will need to encounter, the person and the office of the Holy Ghost. Isaiah 48 and verse 6. Isaiah chapter 48. Did I get that right? Give me Isaiah 30 and verse 21. Isaiah 30 and verse 21. It says thine ears shall hear a word from behind you saying this is the way if someone who speaks to you walk ye in it and you will find rest walk ye in it when you turn to the right and when you turn to the left you will hear a voice saying a voice the same word is used in genesis chapter 3 and they heard the lord walking the voice of the lord walking in the cool of the day that voice is a person and even though Jesus came and walked upon the earth, Jesus is the word. The Holy Spirit represents the voice of God to the saints. Please understand this. Jesus Christ is the word, but the Holy Ghost represents the voice of God. This is what I'm trying to establish. It's very, very important you understand this. If you do not encounter the office and the person of the Holy Spirit, your hearing in this kingdom will have a problem. And your rest is predicated on your hearing. The person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. When I started out with God, I used to watch a lot of Catherine Kuhlman's videos and Benny Hinn. And I would hear them cry and talk about the Holy Spirit. And I felt, it, it felt so strange. How could you talk about someone you don't see? How could you talk about someone who looks unseen? But the reality, the substance of what they were saying, it was so real, they would cry, they would sob. I knew they were not lying. I knew there was a dimension of reality that they were operating on. Catherine Kuhlman would cry on stage and say, he's my best friend. Don't offend my best friend. 
Pastor Benny will continue to shout and say, Ah, oh, he's the Holy Spirit until I began my journey with God. And when I was introduced to the person and the office of the Holy Spirit, my life changed. I knew hmm, that he could take a weak person, my brothers and my sisters. When the Holy Spirit holds you, he can turn you into a sign and a wonder. Many have encountered the Son of the Living God. They have the life of God, but they are unable to be effective in this Christian experience because you need an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit to believers? Number one, the Holy Ghost is the revealer of the Word of God. Please write it down. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of the Word of God. First Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 to 12. Sorry, I'm hurrying up because we're working with time. First Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 to 12. But as it is written, the Bible declares, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Uh -huh. But God had revealed them. How? By the Spirit. That means if you do not have access to this spirit, you also do not have access to genuine revelation. The Holy Ghost is the revealer of the word. Please keep that scripture there. It says, for the spirit is given the exclusive ability to search all things, even the deep things of God. Verse 11. For no man... For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of that man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Hallelujah. It says, now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, to the end that we might know revelation the things that are freely given to us from god when you see men acting as though they outsource a dimension of knowledge from another realm you are right but the bringer of that revelation is the spirit of god that the holy spirit is able to fetch truths from the bowels of heaven and bring it to ordinary men and turn their lives to signs and wonders the holy ghost is the revealer of the word John chapter 16, when you read from verse 13, the Bible tells us, John 16 and verse 13, please give it to us, that how be it when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you. You see how complicated truth is. It's not enough to have access to truth. You must be guided because truth without guidance can still kill you. It's not only a lie that kills. Truth unguided can also destroy Did you ever learn that the truth too can kill? He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself. Are you seeing now? Here, this scripture is the reason why the Holy Spirit conceals his presence. The Holy Spirit, I believe, according to the authority of scripture, has a real form. But the reason why he conceals his form is because his assignment is to glorify Jesus. <laughs> Are we together? That he will not speak of himself. And he will, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. The Holy Spirit is not a dove. The Holy Spirit is not anointing oil. In fact, oil does not anoint. Oil only anoints because someone anointed anointed it. I'm not against that. Don't, don't get me wrong. The Holy Spirit is not water. The Holy Spirit is not wind. The Holy Spirit is not smoke. These are just expressions of his person. The Holy Spirit is God. God in every way. God in every form. There is an office of the Holy Ghost. And hear me, dear people of God, this is a call to come into that level of encounter with the person and the office of the Holy Spirit. The revealer of the word. Number two, very quickly. 
what is the assignment what does the encounter with the person and the whole the ministry of the holy spirit bring he is the confirmer of the word the holy spirit does not only reveal the word he confirms the word isaiah 44 from verse 24 please to 26 we're doing a little bible study here isaiah 44 from verse 24 to 26 thus saith the lord thy redeemer and he that formed thee from the womb i am the lord that maketh all things that stretch forth the heavens alone and spread it abroad the earth by myself 25 that frustrated the tokens of the liars and make it diviners mad that turned wise men backward and make it their knowledge foolish 26 let's read together that confirmed the word of his servants and performed the counsel of his messengers hear me the Holy Spirit is the dimension of the Trinity that is responsible for manifestation. You cannot desire manifestation and neglect his office. Every provision that the word of God makes available, the Holy Spirit is the one who makes it manifest. Very powerful. So when you say be healed in the name of Jesus, you have spoken that word by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is that active dimension of the Trinity whose power goes into that sick body and begins to make biological, spiritual adjustments until that person looks like what the word of God should be. He will not stop. For many years in the body of Christ, there has been a controversy between the limit of the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit. So we have people who say word and we have people who say spirit. Both of them are incomplete. I pray that God will answer that question in this short session. In the name of Jesus Christ, the ministry of the spirit as the confirmer of the word. Mark 16 and verse 20. Mark chapter 16 and verse 20. The Bible says, And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. The Lord walking with them. When they preached and they said, This is what we've brought to you from heaven. The Holy Ghost was there with them. He is with you and shall be in you, walking to will and to do. Men of God, hear me. We need the Holy Spirit to walk close to us if we need real results. It is the Holy Spirit that has the ability to produce supernatural results. No man sustains the ability to produce results at God's dimension except assisted by the Holy Ghost. We're tired of the status quo There's gonna be more than this We're tired of the status quo There's gotta be more than this There's gotta be more, gotta be more There's gotta be more than this There's gotta be more it's gotta be more. The Holy Ghost is also the custodian of the anointing. Please write it down. The Holy Ghost is the custodian of the anointing. Hmm. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord, he said, the messianic prophecy. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, that Spirit, hath anointed me too. Then it begins to list everything that the anointing does. To preach, it takes the anointing to preach glad tidings. It takes more than understanding the message of salvation to preach. It takes the anointing. It takes the anointing to bind up broken hearts. It takes the anointing to proclaim liberty to the captives. It takes the anointing to open the prison to them that are bound. It takes the anointing to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and even the vengeance of our God. It takes the anointing to comfort people who mourn. It takes more than a sympathetic heart. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. 
I have power, he says, by the Spirit. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. But truly, I am full of power, not by my ability, by the Spirit of the Lord. It is the Holy Spirit who empowers men in this kingdom. We are all ordinary except for what he does in us. He reconfigures us by his power. And suddenly we cease to be normal. We cease to be ordinary. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Jesus himself. But you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. And unto the utmost part of the earth. You shall receive power. The Holy Ghost is the custodian of the anointing. Just because you are born again may not necessarily expose you to the anointing. It gives you access to that possibility. But you need an encounter with the person and the office of the spirit. I do not know one man on earth who works notably in dimensions of the anointing. And the ministry of the Holy Spirit is strange to that individual. I am yet to find one. There is no man that works truly in the miraculous, that works truly in signs and wonders of all forms, not just in the fivefold ministry. You must be exposed to the ministry of the Holy Spirit.